आई होप यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट दिस इज भास्कर नापते फाउंडर ऑफ फार्मा ग्रोथ हब आई हैव हेल्प्ड मोर देन 700 हंड्रेड फार्मा प्रोफेशनल्स टू गेट एब्सल्यूट क्लैरिटी ऑन वेरियस टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट विद हेल्प ऑफ ए प्रोवन सिस्टम सो इफ यू आर स्ट्रगलिंग विद टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट और करियर ग्रोथ एंड वुड लाइक टू अनलिश यूर ट्रू पोटेंशियल ज्वाइन द फार्मा ग्रोथ हब today itself and to know more about the services of the pharma growth hub send me a whatsapp message as interested on the number shown on the screen so here is the topic for today's discussion can the test procedure be changed in the middle of an ongoing stability study so you are conducting the stability study maybe for your submission batches for your exhibit batches or you may be conducting the stability study for your annual batches so whether you are allowed to make the change in a test procedure this is the first question that we will discuss the second important question is in case if it is really allowed to make a change in the test procedure how one can bring that change what are the various studies that you need to confirm and perform to bring the change in and the third parameter or the third point that we will talk in today's video about the challenges one has to face while bringing the change in test procedure i hope you will find this video useful and let us now begin with our very first point why the change in test procedure and someone said that you know the change is the only constant and i am sure it is also applicable for our test procedures that is what called as the life cycle management of the test procedure so let us now understand when the change is possible maybe in case if you are trying to adopt the new technologies you have a test procedure with the uh, uv spectroscopy maybe 20 years back and there are lot of uh, revolutions happened in the analytical instruments and you are thinking to shift from you know uh, the uv spectroscopy test procedure to maybe a chromatography based test procedure so you are trying to adopt new technologies and that makes you to think about the change in the test procedure the second can be can be the improved sensitivity specificity or accuracy let us say you are not trying to let us change the technology okay you have an hplc test procedure but for some reason you found that the current method is not enough sensitive the current method has some specificity issues with respect to interference and you know that this is not really a good point and you find that my method is not really accurate one you have validated the current test procedure by the way but you know still the the strength of method is not the sensitivity specificity accuracy or in that sense the another parameters like reproducibility this will also a valid point to bring the change in the test procedure increase operational robustness okay so it is also important that whatever test procedures you have in the lab must be robust enough in terms of analytical variations and in case if the existing method is not that robust you can certainly think about the change the shortened testing times we all know that the the lapse efficiency dependent on to the length of the test procedure so for example your hplc run time is let us say 120 minute for related substances which is quite huge but in case if you think of uh, you know changing this hplc method by uhplc test procedure which can shorten your run time from 120 minutes on hplc to let us say 20 minutes on uhplc that is what something can you know help you in bringing the change in the test procedure the lower cost of the testing we all are looking for cost effective solution and how one can keep the testing procedure out of this certainly the lowered cost testing is also a good point to bring the change in 
the changes in regulatory requirements so it is out of your control it is the out of control of your organization if the regulators bring something that you have to think about it which is very related to the test procedure that you are using certainly you may have to think about the change the changes in monograph for example if you are using the monograph test procedure or if you are using in-house test procedure in another way but if the same mono product now appear into a monograph or if it is existing in a monograph but there is some change in the monograph that can also uh, ask you to make the change into the test procedure if there is a impact on to the the testing and the last but not the least the change in the specification so in case if there is any addition of impurity in case if there is any addition of new parameter certainly you may have to think about the change in the test procedure so i hope this could be the reasons the various reasons why you must think for about the change in your test procedure now having understood there could be possibility to bring the change in the test procedure the second important point is what is the way forward way out that i can make the change in so you can certainly bring the change in the test procedure or you can adopt completely new test procedure provided you must either verify you must either you know verify the test procedure or validate the test procedure so in case if there is a minor change in the existing test procedure you can think about the verification maybe by just conducting specificity precision or accuracy but in case if the, there is a major change in the test procedure or you are completely revamping your test procedure then you can think about complete validation conduct a method equivalency now what is mean by method equivalency that demonstrates the sameness of two analytical methods by comparing a specific set of result now once you think about the new method or the change in the test procedure what you have done you have verified or validated the test procedure but is that the only requirement can suffice your requirement absolutely not now look at here you are not using the test procedure at very beginning of stability study you are changing the test procedure in the middle of ongoing stability study it is very important to prove that the result that you are going to generate will be equivalent with the result that got produced by the existing method and that can be done by conducting a method equivalency you generate the set of result according to your protocol compare those results against acceptance criteria and confirm look here the results are equivalent now this becomes a very very valid point in terms of acceptance of your new test procedure but for some reason you know if your old method is not that good not sensitive not robust not accurate your new method may be better and that can be a very valid point to suggest your new method and this is the point number three demonstrate that the new method is better than the old one now in case if the new method is better than old one you can't say now my methods is equivalent with the existing or the old method right because that method is better than the existing one so what are the point that you must uh, you know demonstrate you must put forward in justifying why my method is better how can you say that uh, the proposed method is better than the existing method and these are the some points in case of hplc run the more number of peaks are observed in case of related substances now this is something is saying that okay your method is able to uh, detect all or the all possible degradants or your method has better sensitivity and that's the reason the more number of impurities can be detected now now this becomes a very solid justification for implementing the new test procedure 
more resolution between the peaks in case of HPLC or any gas chromatography technique. Because you are, you know that uh, the better is the resolution, the the lower will be the errors, because the integration of the peaks becomes easy, and hence the quantification becomes more and more accurate. So the improvised resolution can be a valid point to bring the change in. The third point, more response, and the, the fourth one is the method is the your. Proposed method is specific, accurate, precise, robust as compared to your existing one. Don't you think that these points are certainly going to help you to justify your proposed change in the test procedure? Certainly yes. And then sample must be tested now. So as you need to either prove equivalency or you need to prove how your proposed method is better than the existing one you need to conduct the testing and for testing purpose or the comparison purpose you need to make the comparison of the result generated by existing method and the result generated by using the proposed or new method and you need to have the appropriate analytical sample isn't it so samples must be selected how the sample must be selected look at the point number four that the samples must be selected to ensure the results cover a wide spectrum of result hmm? that means that sample must be a, a better representative of the the near expiry or what is possible throughout the shelf life of the product so the within or beyond expiry period can be the better choice to compare the test results between you know uh, the existing test procedure and the proposed or the new improvised or equivalent test procedure last but not the least okay in case if the quality control is not conducting this equivalent study or method evaluation and validation or verification study if the r and department the, the analytical research is conducting all the study in that situation, in that case, you also need to transfer the new test procedure to the quality control. Now, what are the challenges that you may have to face? And they are very important because every change can bring the challenges. And during this time, what if something new is found in an approved product after changing to a new and improved method? Now, being a quality control person, you are very happy. Look here now, my method is improvised. But what happens if the new impurity gets detected by the new method? And if that impurity or any another impurity or in that sense, the parameter is found to be out of the trend. As we are talking about changing the test procedure, in the middle of an ongoing stability study. So you have conducted initial three, six month data, ninth month data with the existing or the old test procedure. And during the 12th month analysis, you are using the new improvised test procedure. And suddenly you found, oh my God, the results are not in the trend. <laughs> and then you are in the now a big uh, trouble. Think about the out of specification. You found that, okay, up to ninth month when I tested the test product with the old method, the results are within the spec. But now at the 12th month, I am using the new improvised method and the result for this particular parameter is out of the specification. So think about some of these parameters which are having, you know, not in the trend or they are now out of the specification. This is a really a very big challenge. So in case if you are thinking of you know, changing the test procedure in the middle of an ongoing stability study, you have to be very, very sure about the all points. What if accelerated stability is not evaluated using new methods? Now this can happen, right? Let us say you have conducted the accelerated stability study up to six months. And after six months, you found that your existing method is the existing method needs a change. And you started using the, uh, the new improvised method from ninth month onward. 
So how you are going to justify as the accelerated stability data was not conducted by using your new so-called improvised method? This can be a great challenge to you. Now, what if the regulator asks you to do some additional studies on the proposed method? Okay, so you have conducted the validation or verification according to the requirement. You have also conducted the method equivalency. But in case if the regulators are not satisfied with your study and if they come with some of the observations, gaps, non-conformities, how you are going to address those points? If what if the acceptance criteria used for the method equivalency study is not appropriate as per the regulator? It is accepted according to you. Your Q has accepted that. You also found that this is the acceptable acceptance criteria for method equivalency. But for some reason, if the regulators have another say that your acceptance criteria is not appropriate, then how you are going to justify this point to the regulators? And what if the new test procedure triggers the change in specification and stability protocol? Certainly, this can be manageable, but still you need to think about these challenges before you think of making the change into the test procedure for a stability samples or in the middle of an ongoing stability study. I hope you, you must have found all these points very relevant, important and you will consider those points while thinking of changing your test procedure during the stability study. Thank you so much.